bad that I can't turn off. See what and happens when you get a PC? It doubles up. That has nothing to do with <laughs> PC. It's all browsers. And just I like Chrome. I like Chrome a lot. It's I like fast. Chrome. I, I like Chrome. How fast it is. I don't like how RAM intensive it is. It is a hog. Yeah, well, it doesn't bother me very much. No. <laughs> um, I have things that I want to say. About. You have things that you want to say. So I was I was thinking about Spider Man Homecoming or Spider Man Sony shit going on, right? Yeah. And yesterday I talked about how I think Sony. I wouldn't be surprised if they left because they're Sony. Yeah. But and for those who don't know, I'm talking about the stipulation, the rumored stipulation that if the movie Spider Man Far From Home does not make a billion dollars, that uh, Sony is able to walk from the deal. However, if it makes a billion dollars, then Marvel Studios will get to oversee a third movie. Um, I think part of that may have just been pretty good contract negotiations. Like, think about it this way. Obviously, because it's within the MCU, it's in Marvel Studios' is his best interest to maybe advertise, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or not, maybe not Marvel Studios. I guess that burden falls on Sony. But like to, to set it up for as much success as possible. Maybe that is... I don't know. It's a, it's a reason. Basically, Sony made the stipulation so that Marvel Studios would try to set it up for as much success as possible. Yeah, they get all the money from it. Yeah, they get all the money from it. So pretty much it is a way for them to guarantee that they, uh, Marvel Studios in the, is incentivized to set it up for success rather than just kind of turn it out and fulfill their, their duties, you know? So I'm wondering how much yeah. of it was actually them wanting, you know, th- actually thinking like, oh yeah, if you don't make, if you make $990 million, we're not going to go. It, and more of it had to do with the fact that they just want to make sure that they're looking out for their own interests. So it may have just been basically a big bluff, the spirit of which is to make sure that Marvel Studios isn't just fulfilling their contract obligations and nothing else. Yeah, you know, that's real interesting. Um, that's a, that's a, yeah, you know what? Let's let's do this first. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to LR Mornings with Kyle and Jammer. I'm Kyle. I'm Jammer. And I do I do see that kind of like you said. Oh, you guys got nine hundred and ninety million. Okay, well, tell you what, we'll let you slide on this one. Mm-hmm. Good job. You get, you got real close though. But next time we're gonna hold you to it. I can I can see Sony. I mean, look, um, in the world of business and. <clears throat> And you know me, I'm I'm damn near laissez faire when it comes to business. Um, even when I don't like what a company's doing, I'm always like, hey, they got the right to do that. So I fucking hate Sony if this is their end game. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, I still hate them, but I totally get it. It's fucking smart. It's it's just like Apple, you know. Apple has great marketing, great PR. Um but so on the technical side, there's a lot of ways you can point out to where they're inferior. Um, market share is is a, a huge deal. Everybody believes Apple's the most popular, but they're not. But that's because of marketing. And I hate Apple products, but I'll never take away their brilliant fucking business shit. Sony, fuck you guys. But if that's your end game, like that's your goal, that's what you put that in there for was to get Marvel to work extra hard, selling extra merchandise, selling extra comics to uh, hopefully boost this movie of which Sony gets every fucking dollar. Basically, they're like, you guys can have the money from whenever you put them in an Avengers film, but we keep the money for the solo films. We'll just let you guys make it. But our names are still going to be on it. Pascal's name is still plastered all over it. Although I... I seriously do wonder how much influence Sony uh Sony's producers had on um uh shit I'm forgetting Endgame? the director's name oh. John Watts oh. uh on John Watts and his crew like probably a lot they're the I I or, see they, I they don't probably know. have the I mean they they probably it's probably a situation where they have final maybe not final yes, cut rights but they, they do have, have final say so or I Final creative control or something like that. Yeah, that's but, it. Final creative control, but basically, it sounds like they they kind of acquiesce to Marvel Studios. It's a joint exactly. Effort. You know, Marvel Studios yes. has always been about joint effort. It's just at letting another group into it. Um, right. I, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Yeah, how much power they actually have over it? Because yeah, they they're not 
they're funding the movies, they're marketing the movies, but they're they're technically not the one driving it creatively. Right. And and while they do have final say so, like I wonder how often they have said, No, we want to do this instead mm-hmm. versus what Feige and Watts want. That's that's my curiosity is how many times have they exerted uh how many times has Amy Pascal and the others I think A V R Rod does uh is a producer on these ones as well. Uh how often do they do they invoke their power of final creative say? Because um, I, you could tell the difference in the MCU Spider-Man from Raimi's and from Mark Webb's. I mean, oh yeah, vastly different. And this this Spider-Man fits in the MCU perfectly. Well, the hope MCU. here is that they don't have to invoke it. You know, that's like the ideal yeah. is that it's it's more of a collaboration, and that only only in like times of of either crisis or awfulness where they they basically say like, well, I have final say. So hopefully it never yeah. came to that. But I think also the key here is that you you try not to have producers have too much control over it. The hope is that you have hired a director with yep. a vision that is in line with you. And then from there, you basically, like as a producer, you step away and okay, okay, this is the move we're making. Good. We have the same idea. You have a great vision. I trust you. Now I'm going to go ahead and give you all of the... Uh, the funding and tools that you need in order to make this vision come to life. Yeah. And from there... Keep the cost down, damn it. <laughs> keep the cost down. But from there, you know, it's all about uh, empowering the director, not trying to direct constantly direct him creatively. Yeah. So hopefully not, you know? Yeah, that's the hope. hopefully not. <laughs> I mean, really, the hope is really. that even Kevin Feige, even, though if, even if he has suggestions, the hope is that he's not, you know, using his power. The hope is that it's it's all in favor of helping execute the director's vision, not in favor of uh, overriding it in favor of what they want for the overall story. So, uh, you know, by that point, seemed... hopefully they fixed it. Hopefully they've they've just made those decisions already. Yeah, it seems like from a lot of behind the scenes stuff that I've seen, uh, Feige is heavily involved in planning stages, heavily involved early on, figuring out where the movie's going to go. Uh, individually and where the movie is going to fit in the grand scheme of things. But from what I could tell from interviews with other directors and, you know, watching behind the scenes stuff on, on Blu-ray, which could all be, you know, a little bit of smoke and mirrors, but it seems like once the movie starts rolling, Feige does step back. You know, he's heavily involved in the planning stages, but after that he's, he's, Hey, go do your thing. Go do your yeah. Thing. Uh, that's, that's, I think the best producer. I mean, I think he probably yeah. also does come back, you know, when it has, comes to final uh, cut and test readings look at it and, and uh, yep. probably gives notes on like final for reshoots and stuff like, Oh, this is the type of stuff that we need to fix and stuff. I'm sure he does that as well. But yeah, yeah. I, I think you're right. It is something that, that Lucasfilm frankly, hasn't done very well. Uh, and no. that is have directors with the same vision as you so that you don't have to fire them midway through production. Uh, Marvel Studios, they had a couple of speed bumps like that um, in the past. I'm trying to think, what what stage did Patty Jenkins leave? That was relatively late in the process. She left Thor The Dark World. And then you had, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you had uh, Edgar Wright. They, uh, they got rid of him a few months or like three months, I think, before production of Ant-Man. So hmm. they, that was, that was their, their learning curve was, uh, I think early phase two was probably the roughest that Marvel Studios has been, and then after that, I think things got better. Yeah, yeah, not that it was yeah. bad, but it was just you know no. it was it was its least it's at its least flawless, I guess I should say. You know, I I want to keep talking about Marvel, but I just I looked up Sony uh, <clears throat> on Box Office Mojo to check out their like biggest grossing films, um, domestically only. Biggest grossing film Sony has ever had. Sony Columbia Pictures as Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle at $404 million. That is the number one Sony studio movie. Domestically. Ever. Domestically. Um, followed by the three Spider-Man Raimi films, followed by Homecoming. So it it's really like... It's really clear why they are clinging to this thing. Yes. Yeah. I, <laughs> the, you know, four of the top five movies they've ever had um and then amazing spider-man is number seven what about worldwide uh i can't seem to all they have is the um 
I mean, I could I could do this. I could go to all time. I could go to worldwide, and I can sort by studio. Dear God, Buena Vista's holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> um. Or hold on. Never mind. There we go. All right. Uh, the first Sony one I see at over a billion dollars is Skyfall, and that's number twenty-five. One point oh, yeah. one is the first Sony movie so yeah uh there i mean they do have franchises you know they've got bond they've got ghostbusters technically they have spider-man um not technically Men they in do Black. have spider-man yeah <laughs> um i just i'm technically because of how marvel's making them they're not they're, they are so they, they are giving marvel, marvel the movies. rights yeah, to use the, the rights to do use it yes i know it's still there uh, the jumanji things which i really enjoyed welcome to the jungle and i'm excited about the next one mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, they don't, they don't have a lot. That's why they're clinging, yo. They got to create I their know. own. Yeah. It makes sense. Like, it makes sense when you look at it like that. This is why they made the emoji movie. <laughs> this is why they've done all of these <laughs> decisions. <clears throat> but, um, I want to change gears a bit. Completely, actually. Do we talk about HBO Max at all? No, we have not. Oh, man. Did you, you heard of HBO Max, right? Uh, it's uh, it's bringing in HBO and DC Universe and something else. So here's the deal. Um, this is gonna be a big service, man. This is gonna be a big service. Is this the Warner Brothers service? This is Warner Media's service. Okay. Um, why why are they putting HBO in front of it? I then? think that's, that's brilliant. Me. Like seriously, yeah. you ask the average person. Oh yeah, let's go to Warner Media streaming service. Like what? Like HBO has brand name that stretches back decades. Yeah. Like it makes perfect sense. <clears throat> but anyway, so HBO Max is is going to it's going to for a while I was like I wasn't sure of what other competitors there was going to be outside of Netflix, Disney, Hulu and is there anything else? Maybe maybe even HBO now. I was like I wasn't sure. And now Warner Media kind of changed the game. We talked about I'm not sure we talked about it here. We about them um taking the office, taking friends. Mm-hmm. And it sounds small, but those are really popular on Netflix. Like very, yeah. very popular on Netflix. People my wife's binged them. I feel not sorry. The office, but fine. I feel sorry for people. It's funny, I saw a tweet online saying, I feel sorry for people who all they watch is the office or friends. I'm just like, <laughs> that's so true. Because, I mean, I feel like Netflix, they watch, they have a bunch of great shit on there. Like, a lot of great original shows, um, a lot of great anime and stuff. So, it's cool. But, yeah, th- like, this is HBO Max coming out swinging. Like, they have, <clears throat> let's see here, on the thing, they have New Line Cinema stuff. They have Cartoon Network. They have Adult Swim. They have that HBO, the of course. Of. Um, they have T- <clears throat> TNT, like, so many TBS superstation shit, whatever that means. Like, I don't even know what they have the rights to, um, specifically in terms of, of whatever. Anyways, the point is they have a lot of stuff. True TV, T- uh, CNN, and then DC Universe, probably. It's hard to tell at this point. We don't know if it's going to be DC Universe or just like DC branded stuff, but it would make sense if it mm. just disappeared, if DC Universe disappeared. Yeah, just- um, there is, there has been no word yet on the price, but there has been talk of, there's been rumors that it might be seventeen ninety nine a month. I wrote on that rumor. Did you? Okay. And so from the get go, they're going to have 10,000 hours worth of content. And that's not even including the original stuff that they are going to have down the line. Yeah. This is a lot of content. Like this is not like, this is a, you know. I love Disney Plus, and I, I'm definitely going to get Disney Plus. But this is a lot more content than that, and it has heavy hitters like Friends and mm-hmm. stuff. It's it's just like its back catalog will be enviable because Warner Media is huge. They own a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah. So you'll be able to stream your Harry Potter uh, binges. This is another big contender. I feel like that I did not anticipate would be as big. And that I think could even potentially upset things for Netflix. What do you think? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, look, one of the while originals at Netflix have been great. One of the coolest things about 
older Netflix was all the older stuff you could get your hands on. Oh my god, I haven't seen this movie in forever. You know, I lost my VHS tape and I never bought it on DVD. Shit like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Warner, like you said, their, their, their library is fucking huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it is. It's fucking huge. And, Lord of the Rings, uh, maybe. Can they put Lord of the Rings on there? Hmm. Uh, I don't see why they couldn't. I'm just thinking because I'm, I'm wondering. I know Amazon now has like the rights to it. I'm like, does that mean they have? No, they don't have the rights for the previous movies. It's just the uh, the brand current TV stuff. Yeah. TV so, stuff. Um, my biggest question is: Does Warner Brothers do what they did with DC Universe and have a rotating library, which would piss me off? That I would want piss a rotating me the fuck library. off. Just give it. Just give us everything. Just give us every. Look, this is this is one of those things that uh, I've discussed in business classes and discussed with friends and discussed even with you guys at LRM. We're at a point now in our consumption and the way we consume that not only do we demand instant gratification through streaming services and stuff like that, but we demand specific satisfaction, meaning. Uh, the the actual content and we don't want to see rotating stuff we want what we want and we want it right now and we want it very specifically so i want to watch lord of the rings and i don't want to pull out my old dvds because i i never bought them on blu-ray and i'm not going to go spend the money because why not you're streaming shit now that's what everybody does so give me lord of the rings on streaming give me harry potter on streaming give me what else does water brothers on? <laughs> a lot of stuff. give me everything yeah i know they they own a shit ton of stuff you know um i want to turn my brain into mush and watch dceu films so let me do that uh <laughs> um this this could be a massive contender if they put their whole library. I mean, dude, fucking um, Harry Potter and um, Lord of the Rings and um, what's that other one? The, the um, don't they don't they own uh, what's her name? Katniss Hunger Games? No, that's Lionsgate. No, it's Lionsgate. Never mind. Yep. Independent, sorry, yeah. just saw that one. Um, they've got they got a shit ton of stuff. I mean. All the DC movies, not just the DCEU stuff. You know, I like, I love Batman fucking 89 and shit. Um, I think, what's his name? Um, uh, Nolan. Chris Nolan. I think a lot of his movies have been Warner Brothers movies. Um, yeah, he's he's had several Warner Brothers movies. Insomnia, fucking Dunkirk. Um, what else? Basically, I think I think yeah. this is they got a lot of shit. They have yeah. a lot of things. Um, it, I Inception. heard I heard some really weird, 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 weird take on the streaming wars. So we agree that you know this is basically another instance of competition in a in like a in an industry, right? Yeah. They there was this really weird perspective that. Competition in streaming isn't the same as, like, competition, you know, I don't know, with internet or something, right? Or mm -hmm. the internet's a bad example, actually. Let's say competition with hot dog stands. So hot dog stands, let's say you have two hot dog stands across the road from each other. You're essentially offering different takes on hot dogs, right? Maybe different mm -hmm. ingredients, but you basically have... If you wanted, you guys could produce essentially the same product and just fight over price points and presentation, right? Yeah, makes sense. However, for when it comes to streaming, it's not exactly that because you're not offering the same content or the experience of the content. You're offering different content. So it's not like Netflix and, and Warner Media are offering... Are, are offering different ways to stream friends. They're offering completely different content experiences. And then as a result, this is basically more of like a monopoly. And people, instead of instead of it being good for consumers where it's like, okay, well, the best the best hot dog rises to the top. It's more like mm -hmm. the uh the the audience doesn't win because we in in going for one thing we're giving up another thing as opposed to just getting the best of the best if that makes sense. It was a really weird take on it. Like it was, I'm not no, sure. I mean, I completely it makes sense. agree with it because, like, in a way, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, part of the competition is 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 producing the great the great as great of stories as you possibly can and sort of that branding and all that. But yeah. I could see definitely the points that he has there and how you're it's it's a huge. Um, what is that 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 
economic term. Uh, you're giving something up. Cost, not cost benefit. Uh, just trade off. Just go with trade off. <laughs> it's it's like a trade off that you're you're basically giving something up as opposed to making the whole industry better. And then it made me think about the different experiences that each streaming service is, each streaming service offers. Netflix, I think, yeah. could afford to improve on many fronts uh, with their service. As much as I like them, like we're they're not they're not fighting to do stuff like oh make downloads better or oh make it faster or uh, make it more user friendly or what have you. Like they're not really fighting over that. They're literally just fighting over content and overall that makes for a worse experience for consumers. Um, what yeah. do you think about that? No, uh, experience is a big deal. Um, I get frustrated with. Um, God, what's that? Uh, Hulu. I get first. Okay, yeah. Worst. Oh Hulu's, my God. Hulu's is frustrating. Funimation's is frustrating. At least on the PS4 app, mm. it's fucking frustrating as all hell. I don't know about the web-based app. Um, the web-based app is, yeah. is not as is. It's really slow. Yeah, I I, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, the PS4 app for Funimation is is fucking atrocious. Like trying to get to the next episode, like trying to skip around, skip fucking intros or, or outros trying to fucking search get to your last episode viewed yeah uh they're they're annoying on their ps4 app um so experience is a big deal uh content especially when content starts going elsewhere that experience can then become the deciding factor yeah sure i enjoy this or that but i'm going to give up my subscription until this or that comes back next year and then I'm just going to go over here to Disney or, or HBO Max because they've got a better experience. And that one show that I really, really must watch, you know, be it like a Stranger Things or something like that for a good example. Do you start – if experiences don't get better at some of these places, do you start seeing people do that? And then do businesses, do these companies in order to combat that start requiring uh, long-term subscriptions to where you – the minimum is three months or the minimum is six months or the minimum is a year. I mean, I can see that if if too many people leave, too many people start doing that whole, I'm only getting it when my show comes. I mean, right. um, and ironically, I quote, it results in worse customer experience because of the yes. increased competition. Yes. I, I can't remember specific numbers, but I remember an article years ago about uh how every year for game of thrones hbo go or hbo now or whatever got a massive influx of people and then it all dropped when the show was done a couple months later <laughs> yeah so i i i would i don't want to see I, that's the best thing about these streaming services unlike say your your cable or satellite provider is you you can drop no whenever you want exactly no commitments and as a male a stereotypical male i hate commitments even though i've been married for 12 years now i'm joking um <laughs> it's it's going to be interesting like from a business perspective interesting and also from an entertainment uh, uh journalist perspective it's going to be an interesting couple of years is it not oh i am i'm intrigued to see what netflix does because as i mentioned before netflix has seen this sky falling for years and that's why they've been they've been going and, and producing as much original content as they possibly could, even when people said it was stupid for them to do it. Um, and yeah. they, that, as a result, they have thousands and thousands and thousands of, of hours of original content. That being said, the downside, as I mentioned before, is that apart from Stranger Things, they don't really have big branded hitters that are yeah. are you know. For me personally. I'm definitely going to watch their shit. I'm definitely going to keep Netflix because they have a lot of great original content, but I'm also a nerd. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking about Joe Schmo who watches Friends in the Office on repeat. It's not the same. They don't have those big names anymore. And I'm wondering if, A, <clears throat> they're going to have to – I think yeah, last week you mentioned if they might be in trouble because they may have to, like, pull back in terms of their spending because they're pulling back in terms of their spending on original content. Mm -hmm. And uh, you saw that as a sign that they're going down. But I see that as a sign of maybe them having to reallocate resources. Maybe it, it could be also a branding thing where they decide to reallocate into marketing because they do a shit job of marketing their stuff. They don't really market because for them, what they do is they just put it out there. And if it catches fire, great. If not, there's a good chance it's probably just gonna it's probably gonna recoup its costs in some ways over time by getting viewed because each series doesn't need to be a big hit from the get go. It just needs to 
eventually right. eventually hit. It is they're go they're in it for the long term. They're not in it for like you know the first quote unquote weekend at the box office. They're in it for like yeah. the year long tail. Yeah, and and the interesting thing about Netflix and what they what I think business wise they really need to do is actually own more of their stuff because like I told you uh, reading it was one of the business publications um, Netflix even though it's an original content it's still licensed from somebody else it's licensed exclusively and then they get to put uh, and they finance it but they don't necessarily own it outright it depends on I each show you, it, it yes depends it depends on each one but there's 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 less of their originals that they own out like I told you the very first outright owned produced like everything non-licensed Netflix uh, original was the wet hot American summer first first year or mm. year one or whatever first day at camp first something or another the show that was yeah that was their that was that was it man that was the first thing that even though they'd had that label Netflix original for for a long time um I I can't wait to see this stuff and to a certain degree this competition is great for consumers to a certain degree it can easily become bad for consumers um but it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting i could see myself because of how big warner's i don't think it's great for consumers the well we used to more be competition like, like three on, years ago or five years ago we used to be able to get everything on netflix yes now now you gotta now you gotta have multiple the only the only reason why i say it can be beneficial is pricing and and giving alternative options more alternative options to cutting the cord but that's if the prices stick but if the subscriber movement is too much and people start requiring long-term com uh contracts and prices go too high then yeah that's definitely bad for consumers uh on the po on, on the other side of the positive for consumers is that instant gratification. Some people are willing to pay for it. You don't get that instant gratification with cable and satellite, but you do with streaming. So maybe it's worth paying the same price as you do for your cable and satellite just to get the what you want when you want it. I, I don't know. It's it's going to be incredibly interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like there's there's It's very difficult to predict what's going on. For a while, and for even now, I'm kind of thinking, man, it's hard for me to imagine Netflix toppling. It is it is easily one of the, I think it might be the, the single biggest, quote unquote, studio out there, if you account for mm -hmm. everything that's done. Because uh, it's, 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 it's putting out 50 movies a year or more. It's awesome got Oscar award winning movies. <laughs> yeah, like 50 to 70 award like movies a year compared to like other studios which are like 20 or 30. Like I'm talking mm -hmm. about big studios like Disney and and Paramount and Universal and stuff. Like they are on par with the big guys in terms of the content they put out even if it's quote unquote not theatrical quality. I don't know. I guess yeah. I don't know. I don't really know what that means <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Uh but yeah, it's they are big, and they they are taking over um, the UK Pinewood Studios. Um, I know that they have kind of been taking up space over there, and that for a while it was them and Disney fighting for space over there uh, in Pinewood, and Pinewood owned stuff. And that was recently confirmed by the Hollywood Reporter. So yeah, like they are they are committed to this whole production process to creating original content, even if they have a year or two where they're going to be downswing in, in the original programming department. But anyway, when all is said and done, I think it'll be interesting. Um, which services do you think you will get based on everything you know? Like, let's say, let's say middle of next year, what services do you think you will have, assuming, you know, all the assumptions you have about each one are true? I think I keep Netflix... And because of original Star Wars and Marvel shows, I get Disney+. Plus. Um, if Warner puts their entire library on there, I think my wife will require me to get HBO Max. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but... Then, then I'm then I'm looking at you know thirteen dollars on Netflix. Probably fifteen let's go by with, then. <laughs> yeah, let's be real. But let's just go with like the estimates and cost now. So let's say thirteen dollars for Netflix. Let's say the lower HBO Max of seventeen dollars. So $18. right there's already uh seven seventeen eighteen. It's, it's seventeen ninety nine. Is that was the rumor? It was seventeen ninety nine. Oh. So eighteen dollars. Okay. So eighteen dollars. So we're already we're already at thirty one dollars. Um, 
and then Disney Plus for seven bucks. So thirty eight dollars on top of my cable and satellite bill, which um, my wife and I tag teamed and masterfully got our provider to cut down the price to below the cost of PlayStation View because we'd gone out and bought a Roku for the bedroom because you know we got the Playstations uh, one downstairs and one in my room and we were we were gonna go PlayStation View because it was like forty or it was fifty dollars for the channels that we watch and we talked our satellite provider down and only got and got the price guaranteed for a year. So um yeah those those three but uh Warner Warner uh, or excuse me HBO Max hinges on having their complete library from the get-go if they don't if it's going to be rotating i don't see myself getting it uh not not for i mean my wife's got friends on dvd it's just easier to watch it on streaming you know you don't have to switch discs what if what if what if it's like they're rotating but friends is always on there i'd try to talk her out of it (laughs) i'd try to talk her into the damn dvd babe it's 20 bucks a month god dang it so i think i I would get um i currently have netflix hulu hbo is that it but you don't have cable or satellite provider do you no i don't yeah um there's still some live tv i must watch netflix hulu hbo i think those are the three i have so if i were to do this i think i would get Netflix for sure. I'd retain Hulu, but I share that with my sister, and she has my Netflix account, so it's a like yeah. quid pro quo. Um, I have each. I'd probably switch to HBO Max because it's only a couple bucks more than it is already for HBO now. Um, I would probably get Disney Plus because I'm a Disney whore. Uh, and uh, what other services are there? Won't be doing CBS. Won't be doing. Well, what else were we talking about today? Was that it? I feel like there's one more I'd want to get. Uh, Disney, Hulu, Netflix, HBO Max. I'm. What else is there? VRV, Funimation, Funimation, Funim- Funimation. Fun- Funimation. I don't know where the, the fuck, fuck that came out. <laughs> <laughs> Funimation. Um. Okay, so we have here. So HBO. Um. So let's see here. HBO Max, eighteen bucks. Netflix, thirteen. So it's it's at thirty one. Um. Hulu doesn't count because I'm not going to pay for that. Uh, Disney is, oh, so it's the same shit as you. $38 a month would be the same. I feel like there's one more that I'm missing that I definitely want or should have or something. But yeah, those are the main streaming services I would have. So just shy of 40 bucks, give or take. And um, I think that ultimately still comes down to less than $100 a month total, which I guess is, isn't so bad. I say it aloud. It's no. not so bad, but I'm not getting everything. I'm not getting Star Trek, which sucks because I like Star Trek Discovery. I'm not getting... Um, oh, Apple, the Apple streaming service. I don't know what the fuck to expect from that, but I think that comes free if you have like an Apple device. That's the rumor is that it comes free if you have like an Apple TV or something. Maybe so. like an ad supported free version and then you could – because there's like some places that do that. Mm-hmm. Um, like through my cell phone carrier, I get Hulu for free, but it comes with ads. Right. <laughs> I mean, but the thing is I get Hulu. I pay for Hulu or I don't pay for it. My sister pays for Hulu and it still comes with ads. <laughs> like, cause they have a, they have an ad free version for like, I think eight bucks or something. And then the, or excuse me, the ad version for the like, eight bucks. And then like the ad free version is like 15 or $13 or something. I'm like, that's not worth it. I'd rather have ads. It's totally fine. As long as it's yeah. not like what it used to be where it'd be like five minutes of TV and then like eight minutes of commercials. Like I never going to go back to that world ever again. <laughs> uh, oh amazon prime but i i oh, also have yeah. that but um it doesn't i don't count it because it's also because of i how much shit i order from amazon yeah pretty much like all the stuff i order from amazon like in, in two-day shipping it's like that's i never want to live in a world where two-day shipping is a thing i've been spoiled to where when i randomly order from other places that aren't amazon i'm like what the fuck it's been like four days where is the thing that i ordered and i'm like oh yeah it's not amazon i just got to get used to the fact that amazon is insane and and probably grossly underpays and overworks their workers to make sure that my stuff gets on time so that my fucking uh i don't know my the the cat food that i order gets here on time (laughs) well i think that's gonna about do it for us today now that we just talked about cat food yeah (laughs) oh god this has been a long episode yeah, it's all right. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. We appreciate it so much. Leave some comments below. Tell us what you think uh, about that Sony and and Marvel deal. Uh, you know whether or not it's it's uh, meant to you know push Marvel to 
advertise for Sony. Uh, make sure you guys are going by the website, lrmonline.com, every single day for all your entertainment news. Make sure you guys are checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of celebrity interviews, great videos going up all the time. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and make sure you subscribe to the LRM Online Podcast Network wherever you get podcasts from Apple to SoundCloud, Spotify and Stitcher and everything else in between. Make sure you subscribe there. Check out great shows like Breaking Geek Radio, the podcast, LRM Ranks It, LR Mornings, and of course, the flagship podcast for LRMOnline.com, Los Fanboys. Jammer, where can people find you at online? You can find me on Twitter at JamTheWriter and, of course, all my stuff at LRMOnline.com. And you guys can find me at that Kyle Malone on Twitter and doing all sorts of things for LRMOnline.com. Thank you so much for listening. We will talk to you tomorrow. Adios. Adios.